Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, uh, to the stay at home lecture for this month. Um, I'm Tim Nutt, director of the Historical Research Center um, at UAMS, uh, located within uh, or in the uh, UAMS library. Um, the Historical Research Center, as you probably know by now, is the only archives in the state that's dedicated to the preservation and, and um, acquisition of materials that document the history of the health sciences in Arkansas. Um, and that includes photographs, uh, correspondence, newspapers, scrapbooks, artifacts, anything that really uh, tells the story of the, of the health sciences in Arkansas. I'd like to invite you to visit us one day. I don't, the campus is not uh, open to the public just yet, uh, but hopefully that will happen soon. And I'd like to invite you to come up and uh, I'd love to give you a tour of our collection. And speak, also speaking of materials, we'd love to have um, anything that um, you might have in your, in, your, uh, in your house or in your attic that does document the history of, the, of medicine or the, any of the other health professionals. Uh, professions in Arkansas, especially materials that document these times during the COVID-19 pandemic. And that might uh, include photographs, uh, maybe journals or diaries that you've kept on um, how you've survived um, uh, this pandemic, uh, a mask or two. I'm, I'm still hoping someone will take all those fabric masks that uh, people don't use anymore or they traded up for new ones and make us a quilt. Uh, to have in the Historical Research Center. Um, these stay-at-home lectures are sponsored by the Society for the History of Medicine and Health Professions, which is the support organization for the UAMS Historical Research Center. On your screen, uh, you have the contact information for the Historical Research Center. You can contact me at either that email or that phone number. Um, and then I'd also like to encourage you to join, if you're not a member of the Society, um, there's the URL that will take you to our web page, uh, but you can also just um, skip skip that in that long URL and just go directly to the PayPal site, paypal.me slash shmhp, and that will give you uh, an opportunity to, to join right there on the spot. The dues are, are inexpensive, $5 for a student, $15 for an individual, um, so I would encourage you to join if you are not a member or encourage your friends and others to join as well. The Society, in addition to these lectures uh, every month, uh, also hosts an annual dinner and lecture. Uh, we were unable to do that last year because of the pandemic, but we're hoping to start that back up this year sometime in the fall, and we're hoping to um, do that in person if it's, if it's safe. Um, if, it's, if we're unable to do it in person, we will do a, the, the lecture part uh, virtually um, because it's an it's a interesting topic. It's a very significant uh, historical topic to the history of medicine in Arkansas. And it's the, um, that lecture would be, actually be a panel discussion focusing on the anniversary, the 50th anniversary uh, last year of the founding of the Little Rock Internal Medicine Clinic, which was the first integrated uh, medical practice in uh, Arkansas, founded in 1970. Uh, if you've been to these lectures before, you kind of know the drill by now, but just a couple of things. Um, everyone's audio is on mute and, uh, and your videos, uh, video capabilities are turned off. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the chat feature located, it's probably either located at the top under a more button, or maybe it's located at the bottom of your screen. But if you have any trouble, um, just kind of root around in there and you'll find that chat feature. And you do not have to wait until the end to ask your question, uh, although I will wait until the end to, act, to answer them. But please feel free to type your question in the chat box at any time during uh, this session. As I mentioned, this is the stay at home lecture series. We, it's held every, uh, the presentations are held every first Thursday, uh, uh, first thir Thursday, excuse me, of every month from seven to 8 p.m. The June 3rd lecture will feature Blair Hollander, who is at the uh, Special Collections at the University of Arkansas. And she will be talking about Mary Dingler Hudgens of Hot Springs, 
who was um, a noted Arkansiana collector, all things dealing with Arkansas history, but she was also a medical librarian for a number of years at the, at the Army Navy Hospital in Hot Springs. We had the whole year planned out uh, for these stay-at-home lectures, um, but um, we always, we're always, are, I'm already looking for presenters for next year. So if you'd like to maybe volunteer to do a presentation, I would uh, love to hear from you. Tonight, we are going to delve into the history of the Pulaski County Medical Society. And uh, much has happened in its 150 plus years. And unfortunately, I can't get all to that, all of it tonight. I almost need two presentations uh, for the first half of the, if it's history, and then the second half of its history. But I'm going to concentrate, I'm going to highlight some of the uh, more significant accomplishments and uh, more interesting topics uh, in, the, in the medical society's history. And before I begin, I would like to thank Derek Rudkin, who is the executive director of the medical society, the Pulaski County Medical Society, for all of his help in, in uh, gathering these, this information and this material for this presentation tonight. And uh, Derek, I really appreciate it. I know he's watching tonight. So as I go through this presentation, you'll probably hear some names that you've heard before because the Pulaski, the members of the Pulaski County Medical Society have been, uh, have been involved in the healthcare in Central Arkansas for all those 150 years. And of course, that also includes uh, UAMS, the founding of the medical school in 1879. Um, but um, if you're not familiar with them, uh, I hope you'll learn a little bit uh, tonight about some of these um, interesting individuals. So let's go ahead and delve in tonight. Now, the Pulaski County Medical Society, it was not the first organized medical society in Arkansas, although it is one of the earliest ones in the state. That honor actually goes to Crawford County, and um, it was founded in 1847. So that is uh, quite a bit earlier than the Pulaski County Medical Society, but the Crawford County uh, organization did not last very long. So even though it has that distinction of being the first medical organized medical society in Arkansas, it, it, the Pulaski County Medical Society is the first permanent uh, county medical society in Arkansas because obviously it was founded in 1866 and it is still in existence today. The Crawford County Medical Society in 1847 was uh, organized by the, uh, the doctors of Van Buren and Fort Smith, which of course is in Sebastian County. But, uh, and some of those names that you, you see uh, associated with that early medical society in Crawford County, you see pop up later uh, with the Pulaski County Medical Society. Now, of course, that was in 1847, and it wasn't until after the Civil War that we had another attempt to found another to found another medical society, and that was in 1866, immediately following the Civil War, and it was in Pulaski County, the center of the state. The Arkansas Gazette ran an, an ad or a notice in, in the January 5th, 1866 issue of the newspaper said the practitioners of medicine of this city are requested and solicited to meet at the office of Dr. A.W. Webb opposite the marketplace on Monday next at seven o'clock for the purpose of organizing a medical society. Dr. Webb was a prominent doctor in Little Rock at that time. He was originally uh, from Chico County down in Southeast Arkansas, but he had been by this time in 1866, he had been in um, Central Arkansas area for a number of years. Um, that same issue of the Gazette uh, humorously noted that when, when the editors of the newspaper hear of one or two doctors coming together, it rather unnerves us. But now all the doctors are to meet at once to assemble at the office of Dr. A.W. Webb, and the idea rather makes us shudder. And the but they are good fellows, the, the, the article said, and we expect after all that no one will be hurt. So uh, the, a little bit of humor 
in the Gazette about the founding of the, of the Pulaski County Medical Society in 1866. Now, in addition to Dr. Webb, uh, other prom prominent uh, physicians of the day joined the organization, including James A. Uh, Dibrell, Sr., P.O. Hooper, and Roscoe Jennings. And of course, if you're familiar with the history of uh, UAMS, you'll recognize those names as being involved in the founding of UAMS only a, a 15 or so uh, years later, or less than 15 years. Um, by July 2nd, 1866, that early, that first year, 22 doctors had become charter members of the Little Rock and Pulaski County Medical Association. Now, even though I call it the Pulaski County Medical uh, Society, in the beginning, it actually was, uh, it included both Little Rock and Pulaski County in the title. Of course, most of the doctors were, con were concentrated in Little Rock, but there were a few scattered throughout, in, uh, throughout the county in 1866. The first president of the society was Dr. A.W. Webb, whom you remember was at, uh, it was at his office that the medical uh, society first uh, went to organize. Now, Dr. Webb's um, tenure as president of the Medical Association was very brief. So but for on June 13th, 1866, he and his 14 year old son were murdered in their home uh, as they slept. Their home was in downtown Little Rock. The community was shocked by what the newspaper called a bloody and barbarous deed. And two rewards were promised for the apprehension of those involved. A $1,500 reward um, by the executor of Dr. Webb's estate, and then another $500 reward by the mayor of Little Rock, J.J. McAlmont. And you'll also recognize that McAlmont name as, one, as coming up later in the founding of UAMS. So Little Rock was unsettled by this murder and, and, for, and the newspaper ran articles. They didn't know at first who had committed this horrendous crime. Dr. Webb and his son were murdered with an ax. And um, it says that a window was left open. Someone came into the house and, and killed them while they slept in the same bed. Now in the article about the murder, Dr. Webb was described as a bit eccentric, but having a kind heart and an excellent doctor. Later, six individuals were arrested, but only the three African-Americans were found guilty of the crime. And they theorized these, these six individuals were associated with the doctor. The three African-Americans were the, um, uh, were the uh, domestic staff of Dr. Webb. And so they, the newspaper theorized and the police theorized at the time that the three African-Americans uh, planned the whole murder and involved these, uh, the three uh, white individuals. And of course, we don't know for that to be true because you know, the uh, unfortunately African-Americans were often accused and convicted of crimes that they did not have anything to do with. So, but the, the beginnings of the Pulaski County Medical Society uh, did not uh, begin uh, very calmly because Dr. Webb had only been president for a couple of months uh, before he was murdered in June 1866. So one of the first um, official transactions of the uh, newly formed Little Rock and Pulaski County Medical Association was actually a memorial resolution for Dr. Webb. It's here on your screen, tribute of respect, whereas by the severest Visitation of Divine Providence, Dr. A.W. Webb, a member and the president of the Medical Association of the City of Little Rock in Pulaski County, was on the night of 13th, suddenly taken by the hands of an assassin from his place with us and from the walks of men to the tribunal of final accounts. It goes on, and at the very end of that resolution, it announces that Dr. Lorenzo Gibson uh, would then become president of the association. So Dr. Lorenzo Gibson becomes the second president of the Medical Society, and he was, a, he was a very familiar name in Little Rock and Pulaski County. Although he was born in Tennessee, he had arrived in Little Rock in 1833 and opened a family mercantile business. 
And his business was so successful that branches were soon opened in Pine Bluff, in Jefferson County, and Rockport, in Hot Spring County. But unfortunately, in the fa financial panic of 1837, Dr. Gibson left the mercantile business and was appointed postmaster in Rockport. Now, until 1849, he moved back and forth between Rockport and Little Rock while he remained uh, postmaster of uh, the Hot Spring County uh, town. Uh, but in 1849, he moved back to Little Rock permanently. Though there is no evidence that Gibson actually attended medical school, he most likely apprenticed uh, himself with a practicing physician because by 1840, when he was uh, campaigning for a political seat in the, in the Arkansas House of Representatives, he was addressed as doctor. And so there's some indication um, that at some point he had apprenticed himself to another physician to study medicine. He was also a lawyer and of course the mercantile business. So he was a, a well-versed individual. At the time um, he was elected to be president of the Medical Society in 1866. He had already served in the Arkansas House of Representatives a, new, a, a number of terms. But at that time in 1866, he was campaigning to be one of Arkansas's US senators. Um, unfortunately, like Dr. Webb, Dr. Gibson's tenure as president was also brief. After only about three months after being elected to the presidency of the association, Dr. Gibson died in late September 1866. Upon his death, Dr. James A. a. Dibral Sr. was elected president, the third president of the Little Rock and Pulaski County Medical Association in less than a year. Now, Dr. D Dibral remained president uh, for a year before moving back to his hometown of Van Buren. So you had to have, the, the association had to find and uh, elect another president. And they did that with Dr. P.O. Hooper. Uh, in December, 1867, he became the fourth president of the association. Like some of his president, or like his predecessors, Weather, weather um, Dr. Hooper was well known in Little Rock. He had actually been born in Little Rock in 1833, and he became he became known as the father of medicine for all because of all of his um, involvement in medical practices in Little Rock and in Arkansas, and in the founding of the medical school um, about ten years later in 1879. Dr. Hooper remained president of the society until 1869 when, uh, and then for that one year of 1869, uh, another individual came in to be president. But in 1870, Dr. Hooper was again reelected uh, to be president of the association. Also in 1869, the association approved its first organizational constitution and code of medical ethics. The constitution stated that the Medical Association of the City of Little Rock and Pulaski County shall have authority to exercise juris jurisdiction over the professional conduct of its own members. In the medical ethics section, it was noted that physicians, quote, should not only be ever ready to obey the calls of the sick, but, in his, but his mind should be out to be imbued with the greatness of his mission and the responsibility he habitually incurs in its discharge. Those obligations are the more deep and enduring because there is no tribunal other than his own conscious, conscience to adjudge penalties for carelessness or neglect, end quote. The code even laid out how patients should act. Quote, the obedience of a patient to the prescription of his physician should be prompt and implicit. He should never permit his own crude opinions as to their fitness to influence his attention to them. Patients should never allow themselves to be persuaded to take any medicine, whatever, that may be recommended to them by self-constituted doctors and doctoress, doctoresses in this country who are frequently met with and who pretend to possess infallible remedies for the cure of every disease, end quote. Of course, at that time, you had a lot of, um, fake medicine, quack medicines uh, coming on the market. 
course, that would go into the early 1900s. Uh, but it's interesting to note that in 1869, the Medical Association in Little Rock and Pulaski County specifically spelled out in their uh, medical ethics code that the patient had, a, had, a, had an obligation to the physician just as well as the physician having an obligation to the patient. And so calling out these fake medicines and saying you should not take these fake medicines, and to me, it's pretty extraordinary for 1869. The document didn't, it didn't stop with the code of medical ethics. It, it had a, um, a fee schedule and at the end of the uh, constitution. And just as an example for some of the services, uh, a fee for a visit and a prescription within Little Rock was $3 across the river was $5. In the country, it was $13 plus mileage. Um, and then a night visit was $10. So um, the, those house calls would, would quickly uh, add up after a while if you, if you didn't watch it. So in 1869, they have this constitution. They're really on the track to becoming a, a, a stable organization. Um, after their sort of tumultuous few or, or the tumultuous early years. In 1870, the society embarked on creating a statewide medical association. By this time, um, there had other uh, associations had popped up around the state. You had the Washington County Medical Association, uh, the Washita County, uh, all the almost every county in the state had a some sort of medical society. So the Pulaski County Medical Society was the, um, the leader in gathering all these different local and county medical societies together and saying, let's form a statewide medical association. Get, let's get together, let's have an annual convention and let's discuss uh, our mutual interests. And so they, they started that, they convened in Little Rock and formed the Arkansas State Medical uh, society in um, November of 1870. Representing Pulaski County were Drs. P.O. Hooper, uh, Augustus L. Brysocker, who you'll hear about uh, and you probably already know about, Claiborne Watkins, and Roscoe Jennings, among others who were prominent in the society. Now, it's interesting to note that the society membership at that time in 1870 was only uh, 33 men. Um, so these men, these, though it was few in number, they did great things. They took the, really took the mantle of creating a network of, of uh, doctors for a statewide medical association. Um, that same year, the Pulaski County Medical Society also worked with the city of Little Rock and supported a city resolution to gather death, death statistics, which had not been done before. These death, death statistics, I don't know why I have trouble saying that, would include the age, sex, color, nationality, and name of the deceased, which um, uh, that was, that resolution did pass. They did gather those statistics. And of course, the state did not regulate or, or require any sort of birth or death um, records until 1914. So having this done in 1870 really is a big uh, help in researching the early deaths in Little Rock uh, and Pulaski County. Now we remember those sort of chaotic early years and we were sort of on stable footing, uh, but in 1872 another controversy uh, engulfs the Pulaski County Medical Society. Um, and it all started with the uh, proposed admission of a hot springs physician um, to the Pulaski County Medical Society. Claiborne Watkins nominated Dr. Allman Brooks of Hot Springs for membership in the society. And the debate over the admission became so acrimonious that in 1873, Dr. Roscoe Jennings and P.O. Hooper left the Pulaski County Medical Association and formed their own rival society, the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Um, and eventually this county fracture where you had two competing county 
medical societies also engulfed the Arkansas Medical Society and um, really fractured that society as well. If you'll remember in my previous slide on the Arkansas State Medical Association slide, it says 1875, and you're probably thinking Tim, will, uh, Tim said 1870 and the, and the seal says 1875. That was that the original Arkansas State um, Medical was 1870, and then you have this combined one when they when they sort of made up uh, in 1875. Um, uh, as a, and those were the sort of the competing uh, associations. Now you may recall somewhere that you've heard of College of Physicians and Surgeons at some, at some point in your study of Arkansas medical history. This College of Physicians and Surgeons is not the same as the College of Physicians and Surgeons, the actual medical college that uh, existed and, and turned out doctors uh, in the early 1900s. Um, that was a, this was an organization uh, in the 1870s. The other College of Physicians and Surgeons was an actual campus, an actual medical school campus that operated in the early 1900s until it merged with the UA, U of A Medical School in 1911. So it's, it's, it's easy to get those two confused and I'm not sure why um, they, the, the latter used the same name as that, as that earlier organization. Now these two county groups that I mentioned, the College of Physicians and Surgeons and the Pulaski County Medical Society, they operated independently until 1879 when they uh, set aside their differences, they merged uh, in order to establish the medical school. And speaking of the medical school, in the spring of 1879, discussion began on the need and feasibility of a state medical school. Up to this point, anyone who wanted to be a doctor, of course, they, if they wanted any formal education, they had to go out of state uh, to receive uh, that education, whether it be St. Louis, uh, Tulane down in New Orleans, or sometimes even over in Nashville. Um, and so the, the medical leaders in uh, Arkansas, particularly Little Rock, decided that Arkansas itself needed a medical school. Why send our students out of state when we could have our own medical school and keep them within the boundaries of Arkansas. So in the spring of 1879, this discussion begins. Um, and then they wonder, where should this school be? Uh, of course, the Little Rock folks wanted it in Little Rock. Little Rock's the center of the state. But you had the, the group in Fayetteville who said, well, Fayetteville's the center of the U of A. That's where the U of A is located or at that time, Arkansas Industrial University. So it should be located in Fayetteville with the other uh, parts of the university. Pulaski County physicians, these prominent members of the Pulaski County Medical Society, uh, they pushed for the new school to be located in Little Rock, which was the business, governmental, and medical center of the state. They argued that there was no point in putting uh, a far-flung medical school in the in the hills of Northwest Arkansas, which would defeat the purpose of having a medical school in Arkansas in the first place. Little Rock was centrally located. Everyone could get to Little Rock. The Arkansas Gazette at the time noted that, quote, a medical college will add a material interest to our growing city. It will attract students from a wide circle, not limited by state lines, and aid directly to this rapidly increasing commercial center, end quote. Now, at the time, the only college um, in Arkansas besides Arkansas Industrial University was St. John's College in Little Rock. It was a Masonic institution. It's located uh, right about where the law school is, right at the edge of MacArthur Park in Little Rock. St. John's College had been established in the early 1850s and, and at the building uh, that you see in this picture, that wonderful Gothic uh, building, uh, was completed in 1857. What comes after 1857? You have the Civil War. And so when Little Rock fell to the Federals in 1863, they took over St. John's and, and made it into a federal hospital, uh, thus making it the first 
hospital, although temporary one in Arkansas. After the Civil War, the college was returned to the Masons and its educational mission continued, but it never regained its footing. It never was able to get that traction back that it had prior to the Civil War. And even though the leaders considered uh, associating the state's first medical school with St. John's, they soon realized that the Masonic institution was woefully inadequate to educate would-be physicians. So what, where did that leave them? Um, sorry, I have a duplicate slide there. Um, so Hooper, Jennings, Dr. Hooper, Jennings, Watkins, and others, and, and all members of the Pulaski County Medical Society, they began to look at the Arkansas Industrial University. Now, they were still opposed to having the um, medical school located in Fayetteville, but they were thinking if, how they could associate it with the university, but still have it in Little Rock. They came up with this idea that the Arkansas Industrial University, uh, the medical school, as I mentioned, would be affiliated with that university, but be located but in central Arkansas. So negotiations began uh, with university officials and trustees uh, in, in sort of the late spring, early summer, 1879. The eight men that you see on the screen, all members of the Pulaski County Medical Society, uh, convinced the Board of Trustees, and in July 1879, the Arkansas Industrial University Board approved the use of uh, the name, of the Arkansas Industrial University name, uh, for the medical department. Now, this was not an official school of the university. It was a private ownership. It was a private corporation, the medical department. The university just allowed them to use the name uh, with this uh, new school. So this medical school, as a, it was a proprietary school, um, the university would not assume any financial responsibility for its support. So the eight uh, Central Arkansas physicians, they formed a private stock company called the Arkansas Industrial University Medical Department. They each put in um, about $625 to, for a building and uh, they created the first medical school in Little Rock. So the Pulaski County Medical Society is uh, intrinsically connected to the creation of UAMS. Without these individuals, without, the, without these members and leaders of the Pulaski County Medical Society, the medical school would not have come to fru fruition. So uh, Drs. Edwin Bentley, Roscoe Jennings, uh, P.O. Hooper, John J. McAlmont, Augustus Brysocker, James Dibrell, James Southall, and Claiborne Walk Watkins each gave $625 uh, for a total of $5,000 and they purchased a building for the, med the new medical school. Which building did they settle on? Well, it just so happened that the Sparandio Hotel and Restaurant in downtown Little Rock located at 2nd and um, Louisiana was empty. The Sparandio Hotel and Restaurant um, had it was been built in 1873. It was considered one of the finest buildings in the state. Uh, Sparandio's restaurant was highly regarded for its food and the availability of fine wines. The owner, uh, Sparandio Ferrari, was a, quite a character. So, so he established this restaurant in 1873, but for some unknown, unknown reasons, he closed it in 1875, it went under. So here's this building sitting empty after a few failed attempts to bring it back as a hotel and as a restaurant. In 1879, the eight physicians focused on this building in downtown Little Rock, purchased it for $5,000 and converted it into the medical school, the uh, Arkansas Industrial University Medical Department. Uh, I'm actually working on, on researching, I've been researching uh, Sparandio Ferrari, and I'm hopeful to give a presentation on him and maybe write an article on him. He's a fascinating character. 
So we have our medical school, of course, um, the, the history of the of UAMS and the, and the founding of the medical school, that's a whole other presentation that we can't go into tonight. But continuing on in the late 19th century, the Pulaski County Medical Society, um, uh, a number of the members advocated for public health measures. In the early 1890s, for example, example James A. Dibrell Jr., Augustus Brysocker, Lorenzo P. Gibson, the son of the former president and charter member, served on the unofficial state board of health. The Arkansas did not get an official state board of health. The first incarnation was in 1881. That only lasted a couple of years. And the permanent uh, state department of health did not come into existence until 1914. Dr. Dibrell, Brysocker, and Gibson they uh, served as sort of the unofficial uh, board at that time. They advocated for public uh, health, uh, uh, re uh, not reasons, um, they advocated for public health um, issues. That's what I'm trying to think of. So between 1891 and 1893, as part of the Little Rock City Council's effort to address the safety of the city's drinking water, there been some, uh, uh, issues about whether the city's drinking water was uh, safe or, or, or unsafe. An investigation led by Dr. Dibrell determined at that time that the water was safe. It, that, can, that issue, the city, the water issue, continued for a number of years, including it going into the early 1900s. In 1907, then um, President Dr. Edwin Dibrell, who was a younger brother, of James Dibrell informed the city council that the city's drinking water was unsafe and in 1908 an, an ordinance was introduced to revoke the city water company's franchise. In December of that year uh, the city council voted, voted uh, uh, on the ordinance to revoke that and in 1909 the medical society formed a special committee which included Lorenzo P. Gibson to investigate the water issue and kind of come to some conclusion as to whether that the water was actually safe or unsafe. Um, and they eventually determined that it was indeed safe. <clears throat> In 1911, the committee reported that the city's water, although it sometimes smelled and tasted bad, was not hazardous. Um, moving forward throughout its history, uh, as demonstrated by those public health initiatives, um, the, the, the society has always been involved in the, uh, these health issues, these public health issues, but they were also very um, supportive of their members and they came to their members' defense when some of their members were attacked. Uh, an example is in, in 1916, Governor George Washington Hayes um, through the board of the Little Rock, um, uh, the state hospital, the insane asylum, um, wanted uh, five individuals fired from that hospital. E.P. Bledsoe, who was a graduate of uh, the medical school, he refused to fire these five individuals saying that they were, uh, they were good additions to the staff they were excellent employees and there was no reason to fire them on the whim of the governor. So there was this heated debate between the governor and E.P. Bledsoe. The Pulaski County Medical Society came to uh, Bledsoe's support, issued a resolution saying that they supported him fully in not firing these five individuals from the state hospital. Um, Moving forward, I know I'm kind of going fast with this. I'm running a little bit out of time. In 1919, the society was instrumental in establishing the Pulaski County Health Association, which eventually became uh, the Pulaski County Tuberculosis Association. The tuber Tuberculosis Association, of course, uh, helped with the uh, TB Sanatorium in Boonville and, and um, uh, in um, taking care of these individuals who had TB. The Pulaski County uh, Association for, the, for uh, tuberculosis conducted educational programs, administered skin tests, 
And the association had nurses who visited in the homes of patients. And they also opened up a rehabilitation camp uh, in Little Rock for recovering tuberculosis, tuberculosis, tuberculosis patients, excuse me. So throughout its 150 year history, the Pulaski County Medical Society has, has really done amazing things in dealing with public health. Uh, and it just had made some really significant contributions to the state's medical scene. 1925, moving forward, the membership uh, had increased a little bit. The society's membership in 1925 was 150, up from 33 uh, in the late 1880s. Um, and that same year in 1925, despite in October of that year, despite the forbidding wet weather, 32 wives of the Pulaski County uh, Medical Society members met at the public library to organize a women's auxiliary. And of course, the women's auxiliary was instrumental in these fundraisers. They helped with raising money for the Tuberculosis Association, all these other uh, uh, invaluable uh, efforts of the women's auxiliary that benefited not only the Pulaski County Medical Society, but just the, the public at large and the community at large. And so um, a lot of times the, the, these women's auxiliaries are overlooked for the really significant contributions that they make um, to the health and medical fields in Arkansas. Moving forward to 1930, the society was once again engulfed in controversy, this time uh, with some of its members and it supported its members on these other controversies for for many many times many times throughout its history but in 19 in the 1930s it actually went after some of its own members and it occurred when um, um, five doctors in the Pulaski County Medical Society and Trinity Hospital a hospital that they had established in Little Rock in 1924 up until 1931, from 1924 to 1931, Trinity Hospital was a fee-for-service institution. And in 1931, that changed. The physicians of Trinity uh, implemented one of the early health maintenance organiza organizations, HMOs, that we're familiar with. So member physicians would provide medical care to subscribers. These subscribers paid a fee uh, for medical care um, in case they got sick in the future. So the Medical Society, on the, based on a resolution from the State Medical Association, um, the, they, the State Medical Association ordered the Pulaski County Medical Association or Medical Society to investigate this. The Board of Censors uh, called the five founders of, of Trinity Hospital there are four on your screen uh, right now. Malin Dickerson, Odgen Sr., Orange King Judd, uh, Augustine Matthias Zell, James As Isaac Scarborough, and Robert Booth Moore. All doctors, all the founders of Trinity Hospital. Um, and all they had, most of these individuals had also uh, taught at the medical school as uh, well. But they were called before the Board of Censors and the Board of Censors um, found that Trinid, the Trinity HMO was unethical because it constituted a form of contract practice in which physicians provided unlimited, unlimited services for a fixed fee, which uh, in the Pulaski County Medical Society's eyes was unethical and um, antithesis, an antithesis to the Code of Ethics. By the, by the Pulaski County Medical Society. So they're brought before the censor. They are censored um, uh, by the Medical Society. In retaliation, the five physicians resign from the Medical Society and they did it in a scathing letter to the society. The doctors remained um, uh, estranged from the society until 1948. The uh, Following the merger of the Trinity HMO with the new Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, health plan, the, the remaining Trinity physicians rejoined the Pulaski County Medical Society. Um, so just an interesting aspect in the history of the Medical Society. Uh, 
Moving forward, uh, I know we're running out of time. In 1943, society president, Dr. Alan Kazort, one of the early um, allergy doctors in the state, responded to a state senator's charge that the medical school was, quote, a refuge and haven for a bunch of slackers. By, and um, that the uh, President Kazort uh, responded, supported the doctors at the medical school. Of course, most of those doctors were members of the Pulaski County Medical Society. And he said, Dr., uh, President Kazort said, saying that that kind of talk is, quote, entirely out of place in a nation that needs national unity as it never has needed it before. Of course, we were in the middle of World War II at that time. And so another, just another example of the Medical Society coming to the support of its members. In 1953, the, the Society made a tremendous step in correcting really an historical wrong by voting to admit four African-American physicians to its membership. Uh, African-American physicians, it's a long history of African-American physicians in Little Rock, going back to the, uh, uh, of course, the, one of the first dentists in, in, in Arkansas was an African-American, um, Dr. J.H. Smith in the 1870s, 1880s in Little Rock. Um, they were not allowed to join any of these organizations, the Arkansas Medical Society, the Pulaski County Medical Society, and so they formed in 1904, or excuse me, 1893, they formed their own organization, the Arkansas Dental Medical and Pharmaceutical Association. But in 1953, the Pulaski County Medical Society uh, voted to, um, to admit four African-Americans to uh, its membership, including uh, pioneering physicians, O.B. White, G.W. Ish, Hugh Brown, and J.M. Robinson. So that is a big step for the Medical Society in 1953. Now we're running out of time. I know I've said that before. I do want to mention the polio initiative that was undertaken by the Society in the 1960s, so important to uh, the advancement of public health. That time, the Society in 1962 alone helped run 50 clinics in Pulaski County to provide polio immunization. Really, um, the society really just steps up all the time to help with these initiatives. In 1963, the Pulaski County Medical Exchange was established. I've taken advantage of this exchange before. Uh, it was established in 1963. Uh, to serve physician patients and the general public with around-the-clock physician uh, locator services. So if you're, if it's after hours and you have a kidney stone, you're having a lot of pain, you call the medical exchange and they can sort of walk you through it and tell you what you need to do. It was the first an emergency medical answering service in Arkansas, exclusive to physicians. Um, in 2001, uh, the exchange became computerized, which I, I find that a, fa a fascinating uh, little tidbit for that medical exchange. 2001, jumping forward quite a bit, of, uh, quite a bit, a uh, few years. In, in 2001, the first female doctor was elected president of the Pulaski County Medical Society. Again, that was a long time coming. Unfortunately, I was unable to locate when the first female physician uh, joined the society. The first female graduate from the medical school was in 1901. Uh, I had found no evidence. That was Dr. Annie Shopik. Found no evidence that she was a member of the society. So I don't know exactly when the uh, uh, female physicians were allowed to uh, join the society. <clears throat> so I'm interested in that. I'm, I'm still looking for that information. So I'm gonna end it right here before I, I stop though and, and open it up for questions. I do wanna thank Derek Rudkin again, the executive director of the, of the Medical Society uh, for his help uh, with this presentation and gathering the information needed. Um, so I'm gonna stop there. There's Dr. Everett Oates, who was no doubt um, a member of the Pulaski County Medical Society and his students in the anatomy dissecting room in the old state house in 1924. So I am going to, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I am going to open up the chat 
and we have a question. The Arkansas Press Association had censors. How long did that last? I do not know that. That's from Michael Dugan up in Jonesboro. I do not know the answer to that. I know um, uh, I'm the, the Little Rock, city of Little Rock had its own censor board um, uh, for a long time. It operated from like 1911 to 1972. Um, so, but I'm not, I'm not sure with the Arkansas Press Association, uh, when they had their, uh, operated their censor board. Edgar, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, Michael Dugan, again, he talks about, uh, mentions Ida Jo Brooks. Ida Jo Brooks, uh, she was, uh, the daughter of Joseph Brooks, uh, of the, uh, famous Brooks-Baxter War in Arkansas. She was a, uh, she uh, tried uh, to, uh, she submitted her application to the medical school in 18, I can't remember the exact date, 1887 maybe, uh, but she was denied uh, admission to the medical school based on her gender. Uh, and so she ended up going to medical school in Boston, I believe. She came back uh, to Little Rock, started a practice uh, uh, as a homeopathic doctor. And she actually became the first female faculty member at the university uh, medical school in 1911, I believe. Uh, Dr. Davies, Dr. Oates at the, is at the far right of the photograph. Uh, yes, I believe so. Uh, let me share my screen again. And yes, that is Dr. Oates right here, I believe, or it could be him. I'm not positive. I, I believe it's him, this one the guy with the his, his legs crossed. I believe that's him. Any other questions? I will say that this is, um, there's so much more uh, that's involved and, and so many more interesting tidbits of information, uh, historical tidbits on the Pulaski County Medical Society. It's just such an interesting group. They've done so much work in their 150 plus years. Um, and it's just amazing uh, the amount of work that they've done and what they've accomplished and just the, the significance of these initiatives that they've been involved in. It's just really, um, you know, with the founding of the medical school, uh, that could not have happened without the uh, Pulaski County Medical Society leadership, the founding of the state medical association, could not have happened without the leadership in the middle in the Pulaski County Medical Society. Um, that polio uh, immunization program around the state that uh, benefited greatly from the medical society. So the impact of the Pulaski County Medical Society on the public health and just the state of medical education in Arkansas uh, is just phenomenal. And uh, it's just a They've just done really good work in their last 150 plus years. Any other questions? Well, if not, uh, feel free to email me. Um, my email is tgnut, T-G-N-U-T-T at uams.edu. If you have a questions, if you have any information about the society, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and I'll invite you all to come back next week. Um, next month on, in June uh, to hear about Mary Hudgens of Hot Springs. The link that you use tonight to join will be the same for next month and any uh, uh, lecture after that. So thank you all for joining us. Be safe and I will look for you soon. Have a good night. Bye-bye.